What looks like a simple screensaver is in fact not much more than that, but it is made with VVVV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how. Before we're starting from scratch, let's have a bit of a look at what's actually going on here. So we have these circles that are appearing uh, seemingly out of nowhere at the bottom of the screen. And they always move upwards where they disappear. We have bigger circles and smaller circles where the smaller ones move faster. And they all have this uh, gradient, which is getting darker to their center. Okay, so let's start from scratch. I'm creating a new document and let us first just draw a single circle and define its motion. So circle connected to the renderer. Now in order to make this uh, random motion we are using a generative design classic which is called the random walk. It is in fact so classic that in VVVV we have a dedicated node for it, the Wanderer. It returns a random position, but instead of connecting it to the circle's position, this time I'm using a translate uh, transform SRT skier, which has a translation input where the Wanderer's position goes. Now the circle is already moving randomly. In fact, a bit too random, so I want it to adhere to its main direction. So we see the main direction is now left and right. We want it to be more like upwards all the time. And we don't want it to mirror at the border. So we set this to wrap. Now it's always constantly moving upwards. So we can reduce the main direction tendency again to get some more random motion, but still with the main direction being upward. Okay, now we can already draw multiple of them by surrounding them with a for each loop, getting out of the for each loop using a group spectral to draw them all in the renderer, but still we don't see anything because nothing is driving the loop, so we're using a random spread 2D for that. And that will define us the starting points for the circus. So also we should define the area in which they are allowed to move, which goes also to the width of the wanderer. And now you see they're all still popping in and out in the visible area. So we're increasing the area that they're allowed to move to five that will guarantee us that they're always moving, appearing on the outside of the screen and also uh, disappearing outside of the screen. Okay, so the next thing is they should all have a bit of a variation in size. So I'm using another random spread for that with the same count. And the value here should go to the scaling, which is a vector two. So I'm using a two vector to float 32. And we already have some variation. Let's configure that to get something like this. Um, next, I want the speed to be influenced by the size. So I'm, I want to map the size to the speed. So I'm taking the size here and the in order to, to provide a proper mapping, we want to know the minimum of the sizes as our mapping minimum and the maximum of all the sizes of the circuits will be our mapping maximum. And then I say the fastest circuits, the small ones should have a speed of one and the slowest one should have a speed of 0 0.001. Connecting that to the speed it's still too fast, so I'm adding a global uh, scaling here to reduce the overall speed, but still keep the distribution according to the size. Okay. Um, next, I could 
probably add some color and we said we wanted to do this with a radial gradient so we are using a shader to apply the radial gradient and the radial gradient is defined by two colors so let's use a cons here to define two colors the inner color and the outer color uh, let's also say that the colors should be randomly distributed so we are using another random spread again with the same count of particles to influence the hue using a from HSL node that will be the second color because the first color will be the same but with a different transparency we want the center just to be a bit darker also the circles themselves should have some transparency and reduce the saturation a bit now let's also apply some variation in lightness so again another random spread still with the same count another seed and we want to apply that to the lightness um, so here we are choosing some values to get a nice distribution out of it also reduce the overall hue range but we have a bit more monotonous uh, image here and finally we're using a different blend mode so that the colors interact with each other nicely using the set blend mode applied to the shader uh, paint input here and here you can choose different ones i like the color dodge and in order to enable the color dodge i need to give a bit of a background color but yeah like this i can choose some random variations here on these pins and that would already be it um let's see what is a nice combination something like this maybe i will leave you with that